This is Studio Trigger. I didn't need to tell you that though. Even if you've never seen these particular shows, they all look like Trigger. Cloverworks, Bones, Madhouse, they're all immediately recognizable from just a few frames of their shows. But a studio isn't one person's art project. It's a team of dozens, sometimes hundreds of artists all working on a single show. So where, or who, does a studio's looks come from? I'll break down how studios get their style, find who calls the shots, and do a deep dive into one studio in particular to try and find the playmakers. Then we'll try to find an equation for who looks the best. But first, when we talk about animation studios, it's easy for us to think of them as individuals. It comes naturally since all of these shows come out with the same logos and intros and in theory are put together by the same teams. After a while, those logos start to look a lot more like name tags of people than brands of companies. But the reality of the situation couldn't be more different. In my Chainsaw Man video, I talked about how entrenched freelancing and its downsides are in the Japanese animation industry. A brief summary is that most of the jobs in animation are low level menial tasks that require lots of repetitive work. This reality, paired with the sheer number of people wanting to work in animation, makes for pretty bleak prospects, even for the most talented animators. Take a look at the finished product. Doesn't it look real? But these problems also cut against studios. Imagine you have a class where you have to do a project every week, except after every project you have to reshuffle your entire team with entirely new people. This is effectively what animation studios are faced with when they're working on seasonal releases. In this chaotic environment, studios will prefer to work with freelancers they have experience with, and eventually turn them into full-time directors. And this is where our hunt for the studio style heats up. These directors, whether they be contracted out for a few episodes or work full-time with a studio, have the biggest influence on the looks of a show. In a 2017 article, Justin Savakis, the founder of Anime News Network, had a reader write in about this question. Savakis responded with, quote, When it comes to defining the look of a show, nobody is more essential to the production than the character designer and the art director. He then goes on to list a few other roles that have key influences on the looks of a show. And now that we have the roles within the studio that make the big decisions, let's dive a little deeper. And I promised a family tree, so let's get, get down, down to business. business. We don't just want to go to the studio's page and look for who they have listed as staff because freelancers, as the name suggests, come and go with each project. I want to know who's actually working on these shows, not who owns the company. So I'll have to extract the data myself, and I just so happen to know a website with lots of information on anime. Python is the best tool for this. We build a basic web scraper and do some beautiful soup to grab all the studio show IDs. Nice. Mal doesn't have a real API, so I'll just have to build one from scratch. Uh, oh, hey. This guy made a bootleg one. Yoink. Then, a day of coding later, we hit run, and... Oh, that's nice. I didn't want that to work on the first try anyway. After fixing a few screw-ups, dancing around API timeouts, and dealing with shows that apparently nobody worked on, we got this. This is a map of every single person who has ever worked at Studio Trigger. <laughs> Let me show you its features. These big circles are shows, the little circles are people, and these clusters that kind of look like a bouquet of flowers coming off of the big circles, those are freelancers who only ever worked on that single show. This mess in the middle are people who have worked on lots of trigger shows. The colors are general groupings. The more similar the colors between people, the more shows they've worked on together. When we click on a show or a person, it brings up a context menu listing all of its connections as well as its malwink. See, look, here's the Edgerunners team. I think this map is pretty cool, so it'd be rude not to share it. I'll put a live version of this in the description for you to explore on your own time, but for now, we have to find our artists. Once we reduce our chart down into a much less attractive, but much more readable Excel sheet, we find the most prolific artists at Trigger. Of course, Imiyashi and Otsuka are both there, who would have guessed, but more interesting are the people that you can't find on the company's website. These artists are Trigger's standbys. And these people, each of them, are the hands that make your favorite shows. A few things to notice about these animators. Most of them have been in the industry for decades, and these guys have worked on everything. I mean, every one of them has experience not only on Trigger's biggest shows, but in some of the biggest shows just in general over the last few decades. And nearly every one of them has worked across several studios and projects with very different looks and feels, which complicates things. See, if each of these artists have worked across several different shows with different styles, then where are those styles coming from? They're obviously not coming from the artists since they just shapeshift into whatever show they're working on. And after mulling this over and doing some of this analysis on several companies, I think the answer may just be staring us in the face.
The style doesn't come from the freelancers, because the freelancers are professional artists. It's literally in their job description to be good at drawing things as their patrons and employers want it. And it may be the case that the artists who are particularly good at copying this or that studio's style get picked up regularly by that studio, and that's how you end up with so many repeat animators on certain studios. Once the lead art director sets the character panels, color palettes, and keyframing, it's light work for a professional to fill in the gaps. And these animators, with their decades of experience, can make that vision a reality. They give the directors the ability to shape not only the looks of a given show, but the overall style of a studio. A style that's so well defined, it's as if they put the studio's logo in every frame. These guys are the magic. They're the people that turn mangas and character boards into the shows and movies that we watch. And going by their work history, you've probably enjoyed their handiwork more than once without even realizing it. They don't set the style, they execute it. Which only leaves us with the head honchos. Or in other words, I wrote all this fucking code to come to a conclusion that most people would have just assumed. Where does Trigger get their style from? Probably the most connected people on this graph. The founders, Imiyashi and Otsuka. So, no great revelations. I can't believe I wasted a week in doing all this shit. But one question still remains. If the studio styles come from the top down, which one is best? Of course, style is fundamentally a question of taste, so we need some kind of measurable analog. Doing strictly a most viewed anime isn't going to work because that'll give old animes an unearned leg up. The longer it's been around, the more time it's had to collect views, whether they're deserved or not. Highest ratings wouldn't work either because a show with one five-star review would outrank a show with 10,000 four-star reviews. No, we'll need some kind of multivariable analysis, which is exactly what Ari and Ballara did in this Medium article, linked in the description. Ari used a combination of four measures to judge a studio. These were popularity, audience loyalty, show quality, and show quantity. If you're curious how these measures were made, you can read the article, but this video is running a little bit long, so I'll just skip to the section we're all interested in and... T toy? I really can't outrun One Piece, can I? And Madhouse is number two? Well, they did make Perfect Blue and Paprika, so that checks out. But what is the score really telling us? Because no offense to Toei, but I don't even think Toei fans would say that they have the best animation. I think a far better way of interpreting this score is that Toei makes the most anime animes. How do you feel though? Angry! <gasps> that is, everything that is quintessential about anime is most represented by Toei's shows. Because honestly, if you're into anime, you've seen a Toei show and probably enjoyed it. Between Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z, One Piece, Yu-Gi-Oh, and Sailor Moon, if you grew up in an English-speaking country, one of these shows probably defined your first interaction with anime. And, by extension, probably enjoys a privileged place in your rankings that it otherwise wouldn't. So, which studio style is best? I don't know, but when most people think of anime, they're probably thinking of a Toei show. And with all the imperfections that a quantitative analysis of style will always have, it's probably best to just go with the one that you prefer. So how about we just agree to argue about it in the comments? Because the numbers aren't really helping. And we all know that Cloverworks looks best anyway.